Okay, I checked the messages and it looked like you saw that, uh, even though I was not getting a confirmation that we were on. So I'm going to assume that this one is working too. So, welcome back. Sorry, sorry for the, the false start. But anyway, I would like to share with you something that uh, I shared two years ago, a little over two years ago, in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, at the National Conference U US, uh, of the U.S. Grand Lodge of Ordo Templi Orientis. And uh, it's uh, an event that happens every two years for for, it's for a long time. And they're always kind enough uh, uh, to, to in, invite me to uh, say a few words, usually at, at lunchtime. Uh, and the theme for this year's Noticon, or 2019, was uh, uh, Fear Not at All, which is a, a quote from the, the Book of the Law. And I had a few things uh, that I wanted to get off my chest, some of it uh, uh, concerning the, the state of uh, affairs, of not only of the world, but uh, of the organization uh, uh, in particular. And, uh, uh, but I, I thought I would like to share it with you because there's, there's nothing proprietary or uh, uh, you don't have to be an OTO uh, member. You didn't even have to be an OTO member to uh, attend my talk. So uh, it's nothing of a secret or proprietary uh, nature. And uh, I thought it might be appropriate. To, so uh, well, I'll just start off. Do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. Once again, I'm delighted and honored to come to Noticon to be with friends, old and new, and to watch you all eat lunch. Someone please snag me a plate of something. I bring greetings from St. Constance of the Well, Our Lady of Perpetual Motion, who sends her love and her profound thanks. Okay, now, you've got to remember, I've got slides uh, and so, so I would put up a slide of St. Constance and some, and some of the slides were, uh, were timed to be kind of funny because this is a lunch talk. Okay. And, and, uh, uh, I like to goof around. So keep in mind, I'm not sharing with you the, the, the slides at the moment. I've got them somewhere, but anyway, there, there, there's about, uh, uh, Oh, there's about 40 slides or more. Okay. Uh, who sends her love and her profound thanks for getting me out of the house and out of her hair for three whole days. In November of this year, we will celebrate, or at least observe, our 52nd wedding anniversary. So this is a little over two years ago because we just celebrated our 54th. First of all, I'll say, start out by saying how profoundly proud I am to be a founding member of the U.S. Grand Lodge and what an honor it is to serve you as our supreme and most, uh, uh, serve you and our supreme and most holy king as your U.S. Deputy Grand Master. I've been privileged over the last 44 years to witness firsthand the establishment and growth of what I believe to be the finest magical society on earth. I've been an OTO initiate since 1975, before there were any national grand lodges, any local lodges, or governing or administrative bodies. I've been a senior member of the Sovereign Sanctuary of the Gnosis since 1978. My perspective on these things is unique and admittedly biased. But I can say without hesitation, we are all lucky to be OTO initiates 
And at this troubled juncture in world history, we are especially blessed to be part of the U.S. Grand Lodge, enjoying the wise stewardship of the Grand Master Sabazius. I'm sure this would embarrass him, but I believe there is no finer example of Thelema manifesting in the integrity and character of a leader. May he live long and prosper. Fear not at all. Isn't that a perfect theme for these troubled times? So keeping on the theme of this Noticon, I want you to ask yourself, what are you afraid of? Right now, right here, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid I'll sing another song? I always open up with little songs. Maybe you're afraid that your sandwich smelled a bit off. Or maybe you're afraid I might exploit this opportunity to mischievously rock the boat. Or that I might be undiplomatic, or I might undiplomatically lament how truly saddened I am about the bitter polarities that seem to be tearing apart the world around us, and even within our own beloved fraternity. Maybe you're afraid that I might start shaking my aging wizard's finger and denounce bigots and misogynists and racists and xenophobes, or that I might presume to unmask the demagogues who would have us ignore the cosmic and universal scope of Thelema. Those who would squeeze the book of the law and try to bully us into accepting their narrow vision of a monolithic doctrine of crystallized dogmas. Then again, you might be afraid I might raise my voice to condemn the nightmare fantasy that paints the aeon of the crowned and conquering child as a brutal form of magical nationalism, or just another mean-spirited cult exhibiting all the medieval delusions of old aeon feudal fascism. But relax. I wouldn't dream of doing any of that. Fear not at all. Because Thelema trumps that shit. At least it does for me. Thelema trumps my fear, but not my sense of humor. Thelema trumps my fear, but not my common sense. Thelema trumps my fear, but not my humanity. Thelema trumps my fear, but not my joy, or my inclination to care about others, or my capacity to dream. Thelema trumps my fear, but not my passion for illumination and liberation. Thelema trumps my fear, but not my love or my sense of human decency. Don't get me wrong. It's good to be cautious. It's good to be wise. It's good to be measured and thoughtful in all our actions and behavior. But fear is poison. Poison to your magical practice and poison to your life. And don't think I'm preaching this gospel from fear, of fearlessness from the marble pulpit of righteousness and courage. On the contrary, I'm shouting it from the cardboard megaphone of my own ignoble cowardice character. My old diaries show that as I began my life as a practicing magician, it seemed like I was afraid of everything. 
when I rehearsed my first pentagram and hexagram rituals, I superstitiously monitored everything from my heartbeat to my horniness. I fantasized seeing spirits out of the corner of my eye and recorded the dumbest shit in my life in my diary. I realize now that most of my fears of things that go bump in the night came from my traumatic religious upbringing. In many ways, I was still trapped in a hostile universe that reverberated with the thundering curses of a wrathful God, who, like an abusive father, frightens little children into acceptable behavior. <coughs> Today, as I review my old diaries, it all seems pretty silly and melodramatic. Perform the greater invoking pentagram ritual of fire for the first time. Wonder what will happen. Later in the day, broke a shoelace and had acid reflux. Oh. <laughs> or slept with Mars talisman under my pillow dreamed my father's corpse was eaten by seahorses, woke with an erection. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to have... On that, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Thank the gods that I had Phyllis, who in those early years, when she was not projecting her own fears on me, mercilessly ridiculed my naive terrors and, went, uh, and helped me develop an attitude akin to that of a motivated research scientist who overcomes fear by intense curiosity and a sense of scientific wonder. Remember Laura Dern's character in Jurassic Park rolling up her sleeves and plunging her arm into a huge pile of dinosaur poop searching for a clue to the poor animal's tummy ache? Well, I think we can agree that being a magician is much like blindly searching for truth in a huge pile of shit. We need the same detached attitude of fearlessness determination, and an unspeakable passion for enlightenment, if we're ever to find it. The rights of man, as outlined in Lieber Oz, give us a firm foundation for our fearlessness. Last year, I had the honor and pleasure of presenting a short talk at Oz Fest in New Hampshire, and I'd like to share a couple points I brought up. Lieber Oz contains seven quotes from the Book of the Law inserted within the text. Naturally, quotes from the Book of the Law are Class A, so of course we never presume to tinker with Class A material. But the actual text of Lieber Oz is not Class A. It's, it's not one of those works that may not be changed in style of a letter. Lieber Oz does not re represent the utterance of an adept utterly beyond criticism, like Class A documents do. Because it's not Class A, Lieber Oz stands exposed to honest analysis, comment, and criticism. So, just for fun, and because we're not talking Class A here, let's try this on for size. There is no God but woman. Woman has the right to live by her own law to live in the way that she wills to do, to work as she will, to play as she will, to rest as she will, to die when and how she will. Woman has the right to eat what she will, to drink what she will, to dwell where she will, to move as she will on the face of the earth. Woman has the right to think what she will, speak what she will, to write what she will, to draw, paint, carve, etch, mold, build as she will, to dress as she will. Woman has the right to love as she will. Woman has the right to kill those who would thwart these rights. Now, 
Didn't that feel good? And while we're at it, let's really get audacious and thelemic and read it this way. There is no God but me. I have the right to live by my own law. I have the right to live in the way that I will to do, to work as I will, to play as I will, to dress as I will, to, to rest as I will, to die when and how I will. I have the right to eat what I will, to drink what I will, to dwell where I will, to move as I will on the face of the earth. I have the right to think what I will, to speak what I will, to write what I will, to draw, paint, carve, etch, mold, build as I will, to dress as I will. I have the right to love as I will. And I have the right to kill those who would thwart these rights. Now that last one, is, I'm digressing here, that last one in Libra Oz, always gives people pause to to wonder he said oh that's boy you're going to get in trouble saying that hang on for a second how's that for fearlessness but i think we can all agree that Lieber oz isn't a license to be blind or stupid or deluded neither does it protect exonerate or absolve us from the consequences of exercising these rights and also allowing them for others. So that pretty damn well takes care of that, have the right to kill those who thwart these rights because Who knows what rights you're violating for the person you're, <laughs> you would kill. Okay, But anyway, that's long. That, I digress. Lieber Oz is not a Class B document either. It's not a book or an essay that's the result of ordinary scholarship. That's what a Class B document is. Nor is it a C document which is uh, composed of material regarded as suggestive rather than anything else. It isn't included among the AA rituals and instructions, so it's not Class D either. You might be surprised to learn that Lieber Oz is not even listed among the Class E documents that consists of public announcements and broadsheets. Lieber Oz is signed Alistair Crowley. It's not signed Perdurabo or Ankoff Nakansu, nor OM, not 666, not OSV or VVVVV, not to Megatheria. It was signed Alistair Crowley. It's written and signed by Alistair Crowley, a man. A man declaring the rights of man. Crowley labels Lieber Oz an historic document and tells us that it was meant to convey the OTO plan in words of one syllable. Unquote. For a concise and authoritative statement concerning the quote OTO plan, unquote, we might turn to Section 2 of the revised 1917 Constitution, which tells us, quote, The principal purpose of the OTO is to teach true brotherhood and to make it a living power in the life of humanity, unquote. The principal purpose of the OTO is to teach true brotherhood and to make it a living power in the life of humanity. As such, Lieber Oz appears to be intended for each and every Lieber Oz is not just for OTO members. It is not just for brothers of or aspirants to the AA. 
Lieber Oz is not a message reserved for self-proclaiming Thelemites, not just for magicians. Lieber Oz is the declaration of the rights of each and every human being whose evolving consciousness has developed a sense of self and whose self-identity has formulated a will. And that's where we'll end that excerpt from my, my talk to the uh, 2019 uh, U.S. Grand Lodge OTO uh, convention held in Cl beautiful Cleveland uh, just uh, a little over two years ago. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you found it instructive, and I'm I'm glad we got our technical uh, uncertainties certainized, and that uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Until tomorrow, fear not at all. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.